Welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome to the Champions League. It is nearly time for PSG versus Barca at the quarter final stage. And today we have to understand what we can expect. We have to understand what approaches Luis Enrique and Xavi will take in this game. Where are the key battles going to be? And how exactly do Barca go about stopping Kylian Mbappe? We are going to be discussing every detail. This might be the most detailed tactical preview that I've ever done. We're even going to talk about the impact of potential subs in this match. So sit back, relax if you can, and let's get to it. But first of all guys, I have a very important message because today's video is coming to you courtesy of Manscaped, who are not only here today to provide you with the absolute pinnacle of men's grooming products this month, but what they also want to do is raise awareness for testicular cancer, which is why they have partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society and they will be donating over $50,000 and you guys have been a real Really big help in that. I know that you've been enjoying the Manscaped products. I know they've been of real use to many of you and Manscaped have been a huge help to me on the channel here as well. And I think it's great here that we can raise that awareness together because I'm going to leave a link right here in the description of this video which will take you to a video that Manscaped have created to explain how easy it is to check yourself there, to be aware of the signs. That is very, very important for all of us men and you can still get 20% of all Manscaped Manscaped products right now over on their website using the code TALKFCB and remember to check yourself. But if we do, jump straight into things now guys and if we look here at how the two teams are going to be shaping up, what kind of shape can we expect here from PSG and from Barca? When you're looking at Luis Enrique's team here, I think the most likely option is going to be a 4-3-3 setup but what I would say about Luis Enrique is that he's been very flexible so far this season. We've seen at times a 4-4-2 with just Mbappe and Dembele there leading the line. We've also seen him play three at the back, and especially with their right-back issues, we're going to talk about that in just a moment, that could prompt a change in shape there for Lucho. And he's a tricky man to read. They've rotated a lot this season, they played lots of different players, and there's still a lot of positions here that head of this first leg are really up for debate in terms of who is going to play. But I think one thing that we do know for sure ahead of this tie here is that under Luis Enrique... PSG want the ball. They have been a lot more dominant there in possession. They've had a lot more of the ball. And only Man City in this year's Champions League have had more of the ball than they have. And Lucho will want to dominate. He will want to be playing the game as much as possible in our half. And especially here with PSG being the home team, they will want to try and get that authority in this tie. Which is interesting then when you're looking at Barcelona because I think it will of course be a 4-3-3 on paper at least. Because as we know, We've seen lots of variations of that under Xavi this season. He often tries to add there to midfield to get some sort of advantage in that area. We also know that in and out of possession, our defensive line can certainly be very, very flexible. But looking there at midfield, it looks very likely now that both Frankie de Jong and Andreas Christensen will return in that area. And what you get then is a really experienced, really solid midfield there. And particularly there, looking defensively, you've got Christensen, you've got Frankie, you've got Gundogan there, all compact and nicely together, and I think that's a really good midfield for an away big Champions League game, but we're still going to make sure that we carry a threat. We're going to have to see Gundogan pushing on, being closer to Lewandowski as well at times, and I think it's going to be quite an evenly balanced matchup there between the two teams. When you pit them against each other with intriguing battles all over the field, the goalkeeper's going to be key. Donnarumma there up against Ter Stegen, very, very important. You've got Laminia Mal, most likely up against Nuno Mendes. That is going to be a real battle there in that area. Lucas Hernandez probably will come up against Robert Lewandowski and Fabian Ruiz and particularly Vitinha. He can be a real threat there in PSG's midfield and that's before we even get on to Mbappe and Dembele. However, by far and away one of the most important pieces of team news ahead of this match, it has to be the absence at right back for PSG because there will be no 
Ashraf Hakimi. He will miss the game there through suspension. And that is the area that Barca have to look at in detail there. Because Hakimi this season, he's been such a key player for Luis Enrique and PSG. You can see right here, he's actually been in possession of the ball more than any other player in the Champions League this season. That is how key he's been to their whole system, really, on that right side. And both defensively and offensively, they will miss him. And Barca have to make that absence count. They have to really target PSG's right back area by overloading on that wing. Because certainly there, when you're looking at Cancelo, he is going to be advanced. Once again, we saw it against Napoli. We've seen it in many, many games this season whereby he is going to be as far up the field as we can allow. He is going to put pressure on PSG's defence. But what we've also got now is most likely the added threat of Rafinha. We've been seeing him play an interesting role there, inverted, playing just inside the fullback and the centre-back there. And he's going to operate in that space and, again, put pressure on them. Make sure that in that area, because we don't even know who's going to be playing there yet, it might be Zé Emery, a youngster there who can play at right back. You've also got Marquinhos, who might shift out there. Or Mukiele is another option. But PSG are going to be struggling out there. And it's Cancelo's job. It's Rafinha's job to really make them pay. But we have to be careful. Because no matter what you do in this game, no matter how Barca choose to attack or what we're going to talk about in defence, we must always be aware in both of these legs of space. We can never ever switch off with PSG. We can never lose focus. You just can't because any sort of lapse in this game against the speed that PSG have, against the players that they possess, they will destroy us in transition. So before we even talk here about defending against Mbappe and Dembele, before we even talk about our defence, it starts in attack because the first thing I would say is We've got to take more care of the ball. Because in the Champions League so far, by the way, Barca have attempted 150 crosses. Now, only Napoli have attempted more in the whole Champions League this season. And when you're picking out somebody with purpose, crossing is dangerous. We have scored some good goals from those areas, and it can certainly be a threat for us. But... The problem in the Champions League is that we have been so wasteful with our crosses. We have lacked accuracy. We have lacked intent and purpose. We may have had the second most crosses attempted, but we are 20th in terms of our accuracy. And that is the problem here. Because if against PSG, you're just aimlessly crossing the ball into the box, if you're constantly turning the ball over with the pace PSG have, with how quickly they're able to get into position, make runs, as soon as we're giving them the ball back time and time again they will destroy us in transition. You cannot be afford to be handing them the initiative. You cannot afford here to be regularly giving the ball away. We've got to be calculated. When we go forward here, we have to be measured. We cannot be wasteful in possession. Because let me just give you here a real idea of just how often Paris Saint-Germain are looking to find a space. Because you only need to look here at the offside stats in the Champions League this season. They have been caught offside 25 times already. That is seven times more than any other team in the competition. And just as a comparison, Barca have been caught offside just seven times in the tournament. I think that clearly shows there the intent that PSG have to constantly make runs in behind and to keep doing it. They will do it all day long, again and again and again, until they get their reward. It is a constant thought in their mind. And I think it also shows you, though, not only their intent... But also that you can catch PSG offside. If you are disciplined enough here, you can frustrate them. And I almost feel as though here, because PSG have such pace, because they've got such electric players up front, that at times... They're too eager to make those runs, to get in behind. They want to do it. They want to get there so bad. And I think here, if you are disciplined enough, and given how much time we've had here on the training field ahead of this first leg, we should be well drilled. Every single defensive player here should be understanding where they need to be, where that line needs to be right throughout this game. We must have organisation and we must find some real discipline because... We must talk about the danger men. We must talk here about Mbappe and about Dembele. Because let's start with Mbappe, who, by the way, is capable of changing this game in an instant. Whether it's one lapse in concentration, one second where you switch off, he will be right there. And it's not just about the sheer number of goals that he scores or even the assists as well that he provides. 
but it's the nature of his play that can really hurt Barca there. The speed in which he can play with, the willingness to attack you, run at you constantly. And when Mbappe does get a chance, he is so clinical in front of goal. He is absolutely ruthless. And he's the last player that you want to be handing chances to. He's the last player there that you want to be affording any space whatsoever. We must find a way to quieten him. But then you've also got Dembele. Because by the way, he is still a massive threat in this game. He's a different kind of threat to Mbappe, but he is still such an important player for PSG, because even here, looking at the stats that Dembele has this season, where by the way, he hasn't been injured at all in Paris, the stats aren't really good. You know, he hasn't had many goals, he hasn't had many assists by his standards, but what I would say here, and what we all know, Dembele goes beyond stats here, because if he chooses to have a night where he comes alive, whereby he's getting joy down the right-hand side, whereby he gets the space that he wants, if he can get one one versus one, we know he can destroy any defence there. He can really, really hurt you. And he has been playing well recently. He is a man who's in form. He's a man who's feeling confident. And of course he will be out to prove a point against Barca. So you've got Mbappe on the left. You've got Tembele then on the right. How on earth do you go about stopping them? Well, here's the thing. We've actually got some great defenders. Let's start there. Because I would say immediately... I would not switch Ronald Araujo and Jules Kunde. I would not play Araujo at right back just simply with the aim of stopping Mbappe. Because honestly, Kunde's been brilliant out there recently. Over the past few weeks, he's really recaptured his form, his confidence is back, and that's all come at right back. So why would you change that now? Kunde's playing really well there. Araujo is more comfortable at centre back. And the other thing is you can still use both of them. Because you can put Kunde on Mbappe, who, by the way, will give him a battle. He will give him a real game on that right side. But then you can go and ask still Araujo to help out. He can still move out to that right side. Because do not forget here, we've got the luxury of having Andreas Christensen just sitting in front of our defence. And he will have the licence there in certain situations to drop in. And it to become a three-centre-back kind of situation. Whereby Araujo then will have even more freedom to go over and help Jules Kunde, So you can still double up on Mbappe without changing the whole structure of your defence. And of course, the one thing that you have to bear in mind more than anything else with Mbappe, you've got to be looking over your shoulder because, again, it's all about space. You don't want to constantly push up really high if you're Barca. There's no need to do that there. It would be unnecessary. It would be far, far too risky. Don't make it easy for PSG here. Don't make it easy there to have Mbappe looking at the enormous spaces that he can run into you've got to be clever. Push up at times, you know, relieve pressure when you need to, but other times we can drop off. We can really reduce that space. We can drop back and make sure that we are not making it easy. Press the midfield from PSG as well so they don't have time to pick those passes in behind. But there's also the factor of Dembele. And this is interesting here because with Dembele, like I say, you don't want to leave him one versus one. And when you're looking then at Cancelo, that doesn't fill me really with confidence because obviously his best strengths they're not in defence. He is wonderful going forward. I think he can cause PSG problems in this game. But defensively, if he's one versus one against Dembele, Dembele will come out on top. It's as simple as that. So what you have to do again is provide some cover. And Kubasi has been wonderful at doing this, by the way. At such a young age, he has played over on that left side. He is covered for Cancelo. He knows where to be. He knows when to be. He knows how to operate in that area. And it is an absolutely massive night for the 17-year-old. He is going to be key alone in stopping Usman Dembele. But I think what's going to be interesting to see, if we are sort of covering off the wings, if we are pushing our centre-backs over to cover in those areas, I think we might see in this game Mbappe start to make central runs. We don't know who PSG are going to play in that central area, but if Mbappe isn't getting joy out wide, he may then target the middle of the field. And I think what's really important here for Barca and the way to counteract some of this PSG attacking quality and the threat that they have we've actually got to learn from Argentina you've got to look at the way that they approach there the World Cup final and what they did with their fullbacks there is they forced France to play the other way. They force players like Mbappe, like Dembele in particular, to be looking over their shoulder because the fullbacks there were such a threat. They were constantly high. They were constantly there pressing and in their faces that Dembele in that World Cup final, remember, he was forced to defend. He gave away a penalty in that match. He was subbed after just 41 minutes 
because Argentina put pressure on him. We can't just sit back here and allow things to happen, allow PSG to get on top of us in the game. We've got to still carry our own threat. You've got to use Cancelo. Kunde's got to get forward as well. Yamal has got to be really pushing PSG and threatening there on that right side. Make Mbappe have to start looking behind him at what's going on there. We've got to keep them on their toes too. You've got to keep PSG thinking. Do not allow them to have it all their own way. But here's the thing as well. Because when you talk about threatening PSG, when you talk about Barca here carrying a threat, I might not always mean here in the conventional way. Because you might think of PSG being the team who can exploit space, who can take advantage of their quick transitions. But I actually wonder, in this particular match, could Barca actually play on the counter? Could we see Barca at times actually taking on the initiative and hurting PSG at their own game? Because you look at the games there that Barca played, even against Napoli at home, Atletico Madrid certainly away. You look at some of the goals that we scored and the chances that we created, many of them came from quickly turning the ball over, quickly moving it there in transition, taking the ball forward and counter-attacking at speed. And PSG here, they want the ball. They're going to try and dominate position. They're going to try and have territorial advantage in our half and if we invite them at times onto us you remove the space you sit a bit deeper you allow them to have the ball to play it around maybe to commit just a few too many players forward and then you can hit them because you look at the players that we have out there right now Frankie de Jong, Gundogan, Christensen, Kubasi, Kunde. what can all of these players do? They can pick a pass. These are excellent players there at long balls, at picking out long range passes. You've got the range there and then you've got somebody like Rafinha who operates much, much better with space in behind. You've got the pace of Lamine Yamal and these are players here that can be effective in these situations whereby if PSG get on top of us, you can soak up a bit of pressure, you can allow them at times, not all the time, but at times to come forward and commit a few too many players, and when they do, we ourselves can strike, we have pace, we have quality in transition, and it might just be time to use it again. Because even there, when you're looking at the bench, and this is something we've got to bear in mind as well, the game's not just going to be decided by who's out there from the start. We've got options. We've got players there that we can use to change the game in our favour. And just look at somebody like Fermin Lopez. Doesn't look like he's going to start this game, but he had back-to-back -back goals against Napoli, against Atletico Madrid. This is somebody who really enjoys having space, making excellently timed runs, and he's a great option midway through the game if it starts to open up there. If there are spaces to run into, Fermin Lopez can really cause PSG problems. And what about João Felix too? He is somebody apparently that in the build-up to this game, training brilliantly right now. He is looking so, so motivated. He's desperately wanting to start. But if he doesn't, he can still come on. You saw it against Las Palmas there. He's got the ability. He's got the talent there to make a difference in such a big game like this. And if the game really opens up, if there is space in behind, if Barcelona there in the attacking areas have got room to operate... Surely you've got to be thinking as well about Vitor Roque. Surely there he can play a part. He can come on and certainly try and have an impact. Make a big Champions League moment in a Barcelona shirt. And I think the margins in this match, in this tie, they are going to be so, so small. One mistake either way, on either side... That could decide the game. That could decide this entire quarterfinal. And I think from Barca, we have to command. We have to see a level of concentration, a level of focus that we may not have even seen this season. We have to raise our level defensively here to a level of perfection to stop Mbappe, to stop Dembele. And it's time to step up now. It is time for all of us. We believe that we can. We know that we can. But we have to deliver it. We have to come together on this night, on this occasion, and be ready to beat Paris Saint-Germain. So that there, guys, is a full overview of exactly what we can expect from PSG versus Barca in the first leg. But do not fear... I am not done. There is lots more on the way. We're going to be talking match preview. We're going to have more build-up still to come ahead of this massive, massive quarterfinal. Thank you indeed for all of the super thanks coming in right now. Absolutely amazing support. I want to get this channel bouncing ahead of the quarterfinals. And I thank you indeed for all tuning in today to Manscaped for sponsoring the video. And I will catch you all very, very soon with more videos on the way. But until next time, guys, as always, Vizca, El Barca. Oh.